South Africa is racked by high rates of violence. Drug prohibition is a major component. These residents' lives are interrupted daily. Children are often caught in the crossfire between gangsters fighting over turf. Residents say every third house is affected by drug abuse. As soon as we have got more information that we will arrest these guys, to stop and try and curb the, 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 the spread of this trap. This area combat crime unit plans to target eight known drug outlets in the Somerset Strand area. The true mark of madness is where you do repetitive, futile things over and over and over again, and you do not learn from your mistakes. And <clears throat> simply throwing resources at the drug problem is not making any progress. You Might there be a better alternative? Across the world, the debate around decriminalization and legalization of drugs is moving up the agenda. This is a timely conversation to have, as current prohibitionist policies create many negative unintended consequences. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com The police have been severely criticized for the incompetence in dealing with the drug lords. For the past 10, 11 years, there's, there's never been a drug lord, high-profile drug lord, that was ever convicted of his um, behavior. There is a lot of opportunity for corruption in the police every day particularly in high, high gang, high crime areas. If they are protecting a drug dealer, all right, or they're supplying a drug dealer, which they also do, um, you're perpetuating that criminality, that particular criminal stream. It's, it's never going to go away because you're keeping the gangster out of prison. You're perpetuating the drug market. And the meager wages paid to cops don't help matters either. Any policeman at a lowish level or even high up is open to corruption because of the disparity between what the drug lords can pay and what the state pays them to police it. And at the same time, this huge increase in, in distrust and in the way in which the public kind of view the, the police as corrupt or, or potentially corrupt. So the crisis seemingly continues to escalate. Since they can't turn to the police, individuals, groups and communities addressing the violence associated with the drug trade themselves. Are we going to have to run around with guns like this? Is that the thing that's going to happen? Bulldog, an ex-policeman, told me that the residents have now set up their own patrols to deal with crime. So far, four volunteers have been killed and Bulldog himself was wounded only six months ago. Why does the community have to do this? Why not the police? I see the police people on the streets of Alexandra. Why don't they do it? They're not there when things happen. Things sometimes like they happen inside the house. The Ten Commandments in the ring. Peters was at least the 11th gang leader to be assassinated in the Western Cape since the Muslim organization People Against Gangsterism and Drugs they started marching on the homes of gang leaders and warned them that they would be executed unless they stopped their illegal activities. 68 gangsters were targeted by Pagod in a five-month period between March and July 1998. 24 gang leaders and gangsters were killed. Many more were assassinated after this period. With the increasing rise of gang violence in Cape Town over the past few weeks, Pagad has once again hit the street, targeting drug dealers and making their presence felt. Viva! 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 The convoy of cars, police vans and even a Casper make their way through the streets of Athlone and Rylands. Pagad are targeting drug dens and hotspots.
But despite all the killings, the drug trade is alive and well and living. The killing of gang leaders or other senior gang members have by no means stopped gangsterism or the drug trade. Killing a person, silence a person, doesn't mean that you stopped him. Because there's another Rasid you're going to rise up. There's another Colin Stanfield who's going to rise up if they kill Colin. Clearly, the current prohibition approach is not working. Yet police and politicians peddle a stay-the-course rhetoric totally disconnected from the reality of the situation. Identify the drug lords, we identify the drug runners, and get them arrested and sent to jail and throw the keys away. We are the law, we enforce the laws, and we will maintain law and order in our country. Communities need to understand that they need to support us, but we cannot turn them into a vigilante force or into a police service. It's clear the solutions offered by a course of monopoly will never succeed. Currently, the enormous profit incentive for gangsters and organized crime to produce and sell these drugs in the illegal market is fueling the violent gang wars. Criminalization of drugs makes it harder for users to seek help. Instead, it fills the prisons with addicts. What happens in this country, they lock up people for possession and they come out hardened criminals. So all you're doing is ex actually exacerbating the problem. So what if a different approach was taken? The war on drugs can't really be viewed as a success story. Millions of rands are thrown at the policing of gangs and drug pushers. More millions are spent on drug rehab programs. But it's of little consequence. So what should be done? More of the same? How about a better strategy? Our own central drug agency has been looking at the Portuguese model. Portugal decriminalized all drugs 12 years ago, and the results have been remarkably encouraging.